I was sort of surprised, though. Not one, you know, social conservative policy seemed to have made it through that process. Uh, given that over 35% of the party uh, on first ballot voted for one of two social conservative candidates, that seems surprising to me. One third of the party seems to be leaning social conservative, but not one, one policy. Do you have any thoughts on that, Tony? Yeah, I, I, again, I, I, there was a pretty high bar uh, that a policy had to attain in terms of support from various EDAs in various parts of the country in order to get it finally onto the convention floor uh, this week. So I, I think that might have been part of the problem. I do know that uh, various EDAs that were that wanted their resolutions to be presented, there was some horse trading going on. Uh, yes. I, I don't know if, if you're aware of that, but uh, EDAs that were uh, presenting a particular policy resolution would say to other EDAs, we'll support your policy resolution if you support our policy resolution. So it was a kind of a horse trading environment that might have had an impact as well. So uh, I think, as Dean has said, uh, we have what we have and uh, there will be robust policy discussion. I, I read through the policy discussions. I certainly uh, people of differing views when it comes to social issues, there will be places where they might want to put their chips on the table to to discuss those things. So I don't think it's going to go away. Okay. And now one other major thing that will happen at this policy convention, because it happens every two years, is the party gets to elect its governing body, its executive, what we call as conservatives, our national council. And there's going to be a high turnover this time. And a lot of seats are up for grabs. Uh, you know, all three of us, I think, live in Ontario. So there are four seats uh, or four representatives that we get to send to national council. There are, I believe, nine running for those four. So it seems like it's going to be uh, quite competitive. Uh, will any of these new national councils elected coast to coast, do you think that'll kind of shift the way things are done? Will there be more accountability to the membership? Because I know there's been a lot of complaints that perhaps the previous national council didn't respect the member's voice all that much. Dean, what are your thoughts? Well, I think a couple of things, you know, people will be running on those things. It'll be tougher, obviously, to get your vote out because normally you're working the back rooms of the conventions and trying to get people a chance. And so, as people put forward their policies and they're talking about what they'd like to represent, uh, that'll maybe give a good indication of where people are at. I mean, any board that we've ever been on, I think all of us have sat on volunteer boards. It's always difficult to, for one person uh, to, to be able to manage. You, you've got to deal with the team and the, the approach is there. So I think you'll, you know, if that is the, the flavor going into it, we'll see which people get elected on the council and then that'll go from there. Yeah. And one, one thing that I, Love And again, I'm a card-carrying member of the Conservative Party, sat on boards like, like I'm sure you both have, although not held office like you two. But um, one thing that I do like about our par party is that we do have that one member, one voice, one member, one vote, and I do enjoy that. And the other thing I do is, is that there is this overarching principle that we respect our grassroots members and truly anybody who wants to run should be able to run, and we generally don't like the parachuting of the candidates. Although I know, personally, there have been some candidates who've been quashed uh, and sometimes the reasons I don't think have been justifiable enough because usually the reason isn't even given, but, you know, you hear backroom chatter. It, it, does, it, does it not erode democracy when we have a national council which is going to be dis d eliminating candidates? And I know they have to vet them, but, you know, sometimes I think that there's almost an overstepping. Let the members decide at the local level. What do you think, Tony? Yeah, I think it's a fine balance, Tanya. I, I think you raised some legitimate concerns there, and uh, there are candidates for national council who are also uh, articulating that concern that the too much top-down control is not a good thing. Uh, and, and at the same time, I think our mem our members realize that the leader should have a little bit of sway uh, over uh, certain decisions, but uh, but it's important to have that balance. So uh, you're going to see that play out in in the national council elections. And really, when you look at it, the Conservative Party of Canada, there's, we're the most open party when it comes to uh, nominations, when it comes to uh, different ridings and EDAs having different points of view. Uh, you look at the top-down approach, uh, the near Stalinist approach, if I dare say so, of the Liberal Party of Canada, uh, we're, we're definitely on the other side. Of, and if there are certain things that the members don't like, fair enough, but when you look at it Basically, in comparison to what the others are doing, uh, we're pretty freewheeling. Yeah, that's a good point. Dean, we 10 seconds left. Any final thoughts as we head into this, this convention weekend? 
Yeah, no, I just, I just one quick thought on that. It's usually when people prepare for a nomination and then the leader inserts himself at the last moment that really makes people angry. So okay. to Tony's point, it's a leader's prerogative, but you must declare that stuff up front so people don't waste time and money and effort.